Good evening. Oh, thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Rich Pierce. I'm with MB Access Corp. And uh, if, if everybody can hear me, I hope. How's that? I'm a little better. A little better. I figure we'll try to start as close on time as possible. We have a, a full agenda, full evening this evening. And uh, again, my name is Rich Pierce. I'm with in the Access Corp, we uh, own and manage the infrastructure here at Marina Bay, and with the uh, unit owners from uh, Marina Point uh, Council, we thought it'd be a good opportunity to invite candidates for our Ward 6 and at large uh, Quincy Council, City Council positions to address us. It's uh, often difficult for candidates to meet and uh, door knock on condominiums and apartment buildings, so we thought this is a good opportunity to mingle with the folks, and we're thrilled that everybody is here. Um, we at, at Marina Bay have some concerns as you've heard tonight. You know, we're excited about the resumption of the ferry service. We have concerns about economic development in North Quincy and the related traffic issues, and you'll hear a bunch of other concerns tonight as well. So where we do have a crowded field, I'm thrilled again that the members of the audience do outnumber the candidates. <laughs> that was my answer. <laughs> so that um, where the candidates have graciously agreed. Here, here are the ground rules. Very, very simple. We're going to start with uh, Ward 6 first, and we will hear the candidates. We figured scientifically we'll go alphabetically. Each candidate will be afforded, and we keep changing the rules as we go along. So here are the final, final rules. Each candidate will be afforded an opportunity to speak for five minutes. And then uh, Judy Shaw from the Marina Point Council will be the moderator and the timekeeper. And then she will recognize members of the audience uh, for questions for each or all of the candidates. And we'll go for as long as uh, everybody is willing and Judy feels it's appropriate. We also have um, index guides have been uh, Sandra Taylor, also from the committee, will be passing those around. If you wish your question to be anonymous but respectful, uh, feel free to write those, and uh, Sandra will go through those and ask uh, groupings of questions as well, uh, try to cut out the common questions. Um, after the wide six uh, candidates, we will repeat it and do it again for the at-large candidates. And if all goes well, we'll be out of here by the Patriots game on Thursday night. <laughs> so, you know, consider this, uh, you know, uh, city council speed dating. So it's an opportunity for you to hear the candidates speak, get to match the name of the place, and discuss some of the issues. Uh, final housekeeping matter before I turn this over to, to Judy is in the back, outside the door here, in the hallway, there are the men's and women's restrooms. And uh, immediately forget this tomorrow, but the women's restroom code is 234. So, uh, so without further ado, I'll turn this meeting over to Judy and what, welcome up the candidates for Ward 6. And we have the little lane tags in front. And I'm going to sit down and pay attention. to put the uh, candidates' names on both sides. We know that they're exhausted at this stage of the campaign, so they should have their, their rightful seats. Um, we're going to start uh, with Bill, to, to my right, and um, I will sit right over there with my handy little timer, and about 30 seconds before the end, I'll give you a little signal to wrap up, and we'll just uh, go down the line. And then we'll entertain questions at large for each of the candidates. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Um, hello, Bill. Thanks. Um, as a, anybody who doesn't know me, I'm Bill Harris. I'm the present uh, city councilor. Hold the close-up. Hold the close-up. Okay. Uh, the present city councilor. Um, okay. And I got to tell you, for the last 17 months, it's been an honor. I've really had a great experience. Uh, met a lot of folks and when I took office I said I was going to um, try to make a difference but not just in North Quincy not just in Squam but also out here in Marina Bay uh, Marina Bay uh, was uh, you know is near and dear to the folks who live in Squam because we come over here and we enjoy the facilities all the time me and my wife 
Yeah, we run our credit cards up pretty much over here quite a bit. <laughs> but, um, uh, let's talk about a little bit about what, 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 what's been going on with Marina Bay just recently. Uh, with the help of my colleagues, unanimously voted for $164,000 to assist in a sewer line problem that took place oh, my, was a couple months ago. And just before we went on break, uh, we voted uh, unanimously, and I, I applaud my uh, co-counselors to um, put the money. And it's, it really, uh, there was a debate on whether or not it was city or, or Marina Bay, but it was, was something that had to be discussed, and we got the money, and all is well. Every, but everything's moving smoothly right now. So uh, some other th things that we've unprecedentedly did. Um, I talked with Mark uh, from Marina Bay Access. Uh, um, when I was in, in November, when I was in Europe, I was on the phone with the city hall. We were just finalizing a plan to have the main roads here for the first time plowed by the city. And that was an accomplishment I thought that we finally hashed out after many years. Um, some other things that have gone on uh, out here is, uh, that are going to take place is I'm working with some of the different as associations finding um, snow dumping uh, areas for some of the, uh, for some of the uh, folks who've approached me. And we've got that accomplished. So I'm hoping that the trickle-down effect and the savings will reflect to you. And very briefly, I'm, I'm going to just mention also the recent random, um, the random act of violence. I'm going to say random act of violence that took place over in Marina Bay Point. That next day, um, I immediately was on the phone with the mayor, with, uh, with, with the chief. I was with, on the phone with the chief several times. And the fact that we got additional patrols out here was very important and some folks would probably say I didn't speak enough about it but the reason why I didn't was because we also had some random a random act of violence out in spawn and the last thing we want to do is cause uh, you know howl at the moon for the sake of howl at the moon and all of a sudden Marina Bay isn't a safe place to go or spawn or live, or buy a house. So that's the last thing that I ever wanted to do. So if my silence was loud, it was because it was a random act of violence, the city took control, worked with the state, and um, let's, let's just hope we never see a thing like that happen again. But with that, I've been on it again, and I humbly ask for your vote on September 12th. Thank you very much, everybody. Under time, <coughs> so that was perfect. <laughs> Alan? Okay, I'm okay. going to stand up if that's, can we stand up? Of course. Because I'm a short guy as it is, so <laughs> sit down it's and sit on that. Table. I got a big guy here, I got a bigger guy there, so I'll, I'll stand up if you don't mind. Um, thank you very much for allowing us to come out here and promote democracy. My name is Alan Shaughnessy, for those of you that don't know me. I've lived in Quincy for 35 plus years. My parents were, were born here, grew up here, Marymount, and uh, in fact, my mother's family sold uh, their family house to Arthur Tobin, who still lives in the house today, many, many years ago. I have fond memories of Marina Bay out here. At the time, it was Boston Harbor Marina. I grew up out here as a child with my twin brother, Tom. My dad had a boat out here from 1968 until about 1993 or so. My summers were spent out here in the hangar area, down on the water, out on skiffs, out in the bay, and I have very, very fond memories of Marina Bay out here. So I'm a small uh, businessman. I, I have a crane and uh, I draw a crane rental business in Boston. The family has a large business in Boston as well. And as a businessman, I, I've come to appreciate and realize and understand the expenses and the revenues of, of running a business and, and what it takes to do that. I would tell you that. I, I wasn't really going to jump into politics until after seeing what's kind of going on in the city. 
the city has experienced and is experiencing a tremendous amount of growth, an explosion of growth right now. As you know, and you're well aware of it out here at Marina Bay with the new apartments and, and where do you see the traffic? You see the traffic now. The traffic is going to get even worse come the fall after the school season starts and the construction starts up at, up at North Quincy as well. And the leadership, I think, is doing a fine job. However, I think we need some new eyes, some new ideas, and just a fresh perspective on where we're going, how we're getting there, and what are the consequences of what happens to everybody when we get there. Coordination-wise, when we talk about development in the city of Quincy, the idea that we're going to have North Quincy developed at the same time that the MBTA is going to shut down the Wallison station, well, you might ask, well, how does that affect you out here at Marina Bay? Because our <coughs> forum tonight is here at Marina Bay. Well, it's going to affect you tremendously because of the traffic situation and the implications of the additional traffic in the neighborhoods and in this neighborhood. Now, you guys are very unique in that you own your own roads. And Billy had just mentioned that they finally negotiated some snow plowing out here. I think that's wonderful. I applaud that. Of course, it's probably about 22 years or so late. Should have been done 22 years ago, but that's a whole other story. I'm glad it's getting done, as well as rubbish removal. Should have been done a long time ago. Because you all pay very high taxes, exceptionally high taxes. And that, of course, is the revenue side of the business, if we think about it as business. And then we have the expenditure side of the business. Where is the money being spent? Why is it being spent that way? So I looked at that and I thought, you know, there's not enough new ideas or fresh ideas to say where is it going and why. I want to be the person that goes up there to the city council as your representative and speaks for you, asks the questions for you, asks and says, well, why are we doing it this way? If we're going to build a new park, do we have to spend this much money on it? Can we spend it another way? I'm not saying it's not a good idea. We need tourism in Quincy. Marina Bay could be the center point of major tourism, which involves a ferry system, which is a whole other subject, and I'm sure you'll ask questions about that tonight, and I'll be happy to talk about that. I know, I know that they've done some engineering studies, and the first study that was done, and they had a grant for it through uh, the efforts of DJ Foley and others, they had to study the existing conditions, and that moved right along, they had to measure it. Find out where the tide marks are. Find out what can the pier handle. What would be the process going forward? The next engineering grant that was given to them is somewhere in the middle of that. I'm, I'm not sure where it is or what Ty and Bond has, has done with that. Hopefully they'll have some type of report to the city residents soon to say, well, you need a, a, a pier that can withstand a northeast storm. You need some type of a water continuation system that will stop the break water, stop the water from coming in. My time is up. 30 this, seconds. This always happens to me. I start seconds. getting so bad. So well, anyhow, thank you very much for having me here tonight. I look forward to your questions. I look forward to working for you in the future as your next city councilor. Thank you. I want to, you guys hear me okay? In the back there? Right. I want to thank everybody for coming out tonight and taking some time out of the evening to come uh, meet us all. Uh, my name is Steven Striffler and I'm a candidate for Ward 6. I live in uh, Squanum with my wife and my daughter who attends North Quincy High School. And the reason why I'm running for Ward 6, these are exciting times in the city. We have a lot of development in the city center, the North Quincy Station, here at Marina Bay, and ultimately we're going to have a new school in Squanum also. I have an extensive uh, construction background as both an uh, engineer and attorney, so I believe that background will contribute to uh, helping the city succeed in this development. Uh, there's a lot of congestion that goes along with all construction, and I have extensive background in <coughs> traffic, which would help uh, advocate on behalf of the citizens of Ward 6. Um, I could sit up here and probably talk all night, but I'm more interested in what everyone else has to say tonight. So once again, thank you for coming out, and I look forward to answering your questions. Can I take his extra time? <laughs> <laughs> You're a Q&A, absolutely. Okay. We'll have the first question from the audience, and then we um, so um, we will entertain our questions from the floor. 
We've also uh, asked for people to write questions. Uh, Sandra, you, you have some there. She's still walking around if, if you want to write one out. Um, I, I do want to mention that we ask all of the candidates to bring their literature, which is here as you'll be exiting the door, so that they could devote their time to talking about their vision for the ward and for, for Quincy, um, and just not use their time to give their, their bios. So please pick those up on your way out the door. So um, a question specifically for Ward 6 candidates. Thank you all for coming, and it's nice to hear your vision for, for the city, for the Marina Bay area. I, I heard a little bit about the ferry. Uh, I'm sorry. I was, I was thanking you. Um, also, you know, as someone who works full time in Boston, um, I was interested in hearing a little more about, and someone who commutes over the Devonson Bridge every day, um, a little more about the ferry, um, what it's going to take to get it done, um, if you're in favor, in favor of the ferry or not, and um, just, I heard a little bit, but I, I'd love to hear more. Sure. Thank you very much. Sure. Is that open to anybody to answer? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Allie, you're, you're up. Okay. Um, there's a few things that have to happen to make this a real commute a ferry. We'll probably say about three things, maybe even four things, but let's go on a list of things that, that have to happen in order for this to, to, to function as a working commuter boat so that people can rely on it. The first thing that would have to happen, other than just talking about it, is that Commander Shea Boulevard has to be extended. We can't just keep talking about it and saying, oh, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. It doesn't happen unless somebody goes up and approaches the owner, Boston Scientific slash Federal Express, I believe it's the owner, Commander Shea Boulevard. The first thing is you have to get that extended because that has to be the route in and out of the commuter area. You can have people coming down Quincy Shore Drive, no right-hand turn going into to Squanum and then a left-hand turn coming into Marina Bay Access Road. Let them keep on going, get down, unfortunately for the no-name road, they'd have to take the right there, take the right, and then come back down Commander Shea Boulevard directly into the 850 car capacity parking lot that they the audacity to think that they should charge people for and they're trying to promote the, the ferry. First thing, let's open up and extend Commander Shea Boulevard. Right. The second thing, let's look at the pier system that's involved out here for a real legitimate commuter boat. The pier system that we have out now is antiquated for where it is, where it is, and it was antiquated from day one. It's, it's a design from the 1800s. It's a pier without any type of uh, sea protection. You have to provide protection, you have to make it ADA compliant, and you have to make it workable 365 days a year, seven days a week, because commuters can't come down at seven o'clock in the morning and find out the wind's blowing 22 miles an hour, and the poor little Valkyrie coming out of Winthrop can't make it across the bay. You no, know, they have to meet a serious commuter boat, one that goes fast, one that's comfortable, one that's warm, that you can take in the winter time, and you know it's going to be there reliably every 30 minutes, in and out. No stops over to Winthrop on the way, no stops at Winthrop on the way back here. Now I applaud the efforts because it was the beginning effort to try and get the commuter boat going so we could figure out what we're doing. That's wonderful. Let's continue on with that. That's the second thing. You have to get some type of a breakwater system put in. You have to get the MBTA committed to it because you can't do it. You cannot do it as a private enterprise or the small town of Winthrop trying to support it. You have to have the MBTA subsidize it. So it's a real commuter boat, just like they have down in Hingham, where they just spent millions of dollars and given them a brand new commuter boat receiving facility. And we have a nice shelter, admittedly, but it's a little bit antiquated for if you really want to have a commuter boat facility. So we need a new road. We need water protection on a, on a new pier. We need the MBTA to be involved with it. And the last thing is we have to have a commitment from the state, especially the state and the state legislators that work with us, to say that there's going to be money there so that when you come to get the commuter boat, it's there. And it doesn't stop because nobody's riding it Tuesday. It's there every day at the times it's supposed to be so that the commuters, not only from Marina Bay, Squanum, North Quincy, 
but this will become a commuter based spot for everybody coming up from the South Shore. Thank you. Thank you. Steve? Yes. Uh, the ferry is uh, just one piece of the traffic puzzle. Access is very important to the city, excuse me, to the ferry, Commander Shea Boulevard. But also you need a means between North Quincy T Station and the ferry on a regular basis to make it part of a true intermodal transportation system. Now, you have to create demand for the ferry. How do you do that? Well, access is only one piece of the puzzle. Another piece is make it an economically viable alternative. You know, charging someone to park and having the fares that are really not economically an incentive to use the ferry, you're not going to get much use. The MBTA is subsidized by the government. It doesn't run purely on just fares. It's subsidized. The ferry service should also be subsidized also. It shouldn't be expected to stand alone financially on just fares. The other issue is, in Boston, the ferry landings. If you're not having the landing where the need is, what good is it? There's very, it could be there's the seaport is a very extensive area that's been developed. We should have a ferry stop there. We should also have one in addition to Rose Wharf. More importantly, the time should be convenient for commuters because if the times aren't there, they can't use it and everyone's using the bridge. And more importantly, it has to be reliable. You can't be showing up for ferry service that doesn't operate in bad weather. So we need reliable boats, an economic alternative, and reliable access. Thank you. Um, as, as some of you were probably here for the ferry, we had a ferry community meeting with uh, Senator Keenan and uh, Bruce Ayers. And uh, it started on their level. Uh, we had a first mediocre, they said it was a good year the first time. Uh, what the gentleman said prior to me makes sense. It, uh, and it, it, everybody is saying it, it has to be uh, subsidized by the state. But as we know, the state says they have no money. So it's an uphill battle. Um, you know, there's, there's no doubt in my mind that the, the times are bad. The mayor's office is working on it. That ship doesn't work. It's not right that people were waiting and there was no boat. That's happened more than one time. And it was on a perfect day where people were just, that was the year that they were, they, they were shuttling over to the island. And, People were going to have a picnic and they couldn't do it, and it's just one of those things. And it wasn't, it wasn't um, uh, Winthrop that was bailing us out. It was actually us who bailed them out because they were going out of business. That's the truth. They were the ones who were struggling, and we we kept them going. Uh, the times the times are affected not by the boat itself. It's the piers. The peers control that and control. That's why the times were bad. So yes, we need the MBTA to step in. We need to get a better, I, I remember sitting out on an awful rocky day with Senator Keenan and um, a representative, his uh, representative, uh, with Boston Harbor Cruises. So the city is looking into it. I was part of that meeting. It was a rocky day. And that boat, it, it was funny, that day the, the Boston Harbor Cruise boat had a drift in with the wind. And there are a lot of factors with that pier. The pier is outdated, it needs replacing. Replacing means money. But it certainly cannot come out of the city's budget because it's too much, it's, it would be too expensive. We need our state, we need to call on our state legislature, we need to call on our governor to fix it. Because with their MBTA system not working the way it's supposed to, we need it. I commute for the last 12 years over that Neponset Bridge, I go to Woburn every day, and it's awful. And I've been complaining about it. I've had one little, not heated discussion with the mayor about the fact that he should be asking the governor for more state troopers on the bridge when they do close down, uh, when they do close down uh, uh, Wallace Station, because there's got to be more cars. The problem isn't. The problem isn't. The Quincy residents going over the bridge, believe it or not, it's it's the people who are coming from Hingham that aren't using the ferry, that's that 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 they have, uh, not using the purple line, which I believe they have, people from Situate to be able to get in town. They're not using the facilities that they have that we would love to have, and we need. So. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A question on another subject. Please. 
last question on this. So essentially it sounds like we've been beating a dead horse for several years trying to find money. The MBTA, the city, those are probably not going to be viable solutions. We have an impending traffic crisis that's coming. It's going to really impact us. That we know for sure. Has anybody reached out to corporate interests? We have GE in the seaport that would love to find ways to get its workers into town in more efficient ways. Has anyone reached out to other companies that are flush with cash, unlike the city and the state, to look for possible contributions in this area as other states have done? I can't answer you specifically if anybody's reached out. Bill may know that if the city's reached out to corporate interests to try and sponsor, maybe throw some money towards a, a sponsorship on the commuter boat. I, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. But I know that right now, the situation that you're talking about coming down the road is here, and it's approached us. And corporation-wise, the developer up at the North Quincy Station, who's going to make a lot of money on that, and I, I think that's wonderful. That's why he's in business. And it's going to make a nice approach to the city from the north. Beautiful new development. Great. A lot of traffic is going to come with it. The T wants this development because the T gets a lot of money from the development and they're desperate for cash. We as a city have the opportunity because we're part of the mix to say to the T, hold on, put the brakes on here. We're for this, we appreciate this, we want to see you do it. However, how about on the corporate side of the equation, why don't we get the corporations that's coming that's going to make a lot of money and let them pay for a free shuttle that goes down into the parking lot and picks up people here at Marina Bay or are you from Squam, or even North Quincy, and let them park out here for free and get onto a free bus that takes them up to the MBTA station during the construction. And let the MBTA understand that, hey, you should be coming Coco with a little more cash for the people that you're affecting here. Because you're going to affect a lot of people for years to come so that you can make more money on your station, which is good for the benefit of everybody. But you know something? You've got to help us out a little bit. It's time to come Coco. And if nobody has approached GE yet, or Gillette Corporation, or Procter & Gamble, the other, it all, it don't even go into the drug companies, Pfizer, Bayer, all the rest of them that are here. Yes, would their executives and their employees like to take a ferry to the South Shore right to here, and maybe not, that they don't live down in Hingham, they might live here in Quincy? You bet they would. And maybe should, somebody should put the olive branch out to them and say, hey, we'll help you out here, help us out. The T in particular, they're the ones. They're the ones that you got to say to them now while you can. You want to build that up there? Come, Coco, and sit down at the table. Tell us what you're going to do for the residents here. All right, Allie, thank you. Um, one solution is, especially with large corporations, they allow their employees to buy commuter passes with pre-tax dollars. Having the ferry service as part of the MBTA service where they can use those commuter passes to access ferry service with pre-tax dollars makes it a more economic viable alternative. And it goes back to, again, the ferry landings in the city. If we're gonna put landings near these headquarters, there's an incentive to take it to work. No one's gonna take a ferry to work when they're gonna be two miles, three miles from their office, expect to walk in the winter time and in the rain. And how many people remember when the Neponset Bridge was under construction? Yeah. Everybody remember that? You remember the traffic work was better over the bridge during construction yeah. than now? Right. Why? Yeah. Because they had a state trooper every morning at the bottom of the Ponce Circle helping alleviate the traffic. Did it make the, eliminate all the traffic? No, but it made traffic flow a lot better. Mm -hmm. Why can't we continue that? Thank you. And the corporation can pick, up, pick it up and pay for it. Um, a uh, question I'll, on I'll, that. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I'm, I'm, oh, Bill. I'm yeah, sorry. sorry. It's okay. Um, just to add on. Um, that was the discussion I mentioned with the mayor. I suffered through, like a lot of us, going over that bridge during reconstruction. It was better than it was last, last um, spring, before school let out, before people started going on vacation. It was better than then. We do have a traffic situation. I have to tell you, uh, Steve is right on the money, and that was what I was saying to the mayor. We need a, a police officer at the no-name road, not allowing the same people, and people have heard me say this before, drive up that third lane and then cut over. Mm -hmm. And they all have Nantastic, Nantasket stickers on it. The same minivan has it <laughs> passing me on the left. And you've heard me say that story before. It's aggravating as heck. And these are the things. I mean, you know, when they went to one lane, uh, when they went to one lane down at Hingham, whatever, and uh, Hingham and Situate on the, the bridge, 
I saw a difference in the traffic. It was lighter, you know, just before the summertime actually did kick in. So uh, we have to do some, slow them down, get those lights. I know it's not my ward down at, uh, as they come over the bridge and take the, the rotary, but I certainly don't like to have long lights there and the Quincy folks get to go through. And, and traffic is a situation too. And the, another part of our ward is the people who are com commuting through it. And we have people who are flying through our streets. Um, and I, I witnessed it even knocking on doors on Bayfield Road, who I've been working with uh, a couple of the uh, residents there. Signs, that people don't even look at the signs now. I mean, we lowered the, um, I, I, I initially put in a lowering the speed limit to slow people down, to slow the commuters down. Get them on the commuter boat where they belong so they're not going into our, our area. That's what we need to do. We need to fix it somehow. But it isn't only the development we got going on right now. The North Quincy Station is, is what they call uh, transit orientated, uh, transit -orientated uh, development. That means they're going to be taking the T. But the way the T is running right now, they don't have enough, they don't have enough cars, they don't fill up the whole station, and there should be a train following right after another train pulls in. People are telling me how they can't get on, they can't commute. So why would they bother going on the train? That's why they're taking their cars. We've got to allow and help the MBTA get some type of relief as well and be able to improve, which they're supposed to improve the red line. And that's what we need to have happen. Both, you know, unfortunately, the timing is bad. It's about, it's about, going to have about a year overlay. But uh, I'm confident with the mayor, with the mayor had said, we'll work with the new uh, traffic department. As things go on, we're going to, we're going to work it and work it and work it. And that, that's where we're at today. I mean, there's, if, I, if there was a magic wand, it would have been waived. And it, it isn't there right now. Thank you, Bill. Um, on another subject, or shall we start? Uh, so. I am, my name is Jim Rooney. I'm a resident of Ward 5. And I'd like to talk about the Wollaston T. I ride the T four or five times a week. A week. And, and it started off as having, we wanted an elevator there, which was badly needed. And it's mushroomed into something huge, coupled with the, the project in, at North Quincy Station. And it's going to be a mess. And like forced busing, these people will come up and, and, and decided on this. They're not going to be affected by it. I, I would guarantee that. Not guarantee, but I, I venture to say. And it's quite unfair. This is going to go on for, it will go on probably a third longer than it's supposed to. And we're going to be riding buses and all that stuff. It's not going to work out. But, you know, you got to, you got to be there, you got to get through this to make these decisions. You just can't say, oh, this looks like a good idea, and, and so we'll do it. But that, that, that's going to be, it's going to be real bad, and the, the cons are going to greatly outweigh the pros, the advantages of, of what's going to be done. And, and I don't know if it could be rescinded, but if it could be, uh, those that have the power to do so, I, would appreciate it if they do something about it. And I know there's been a lot of people talking about it. It was a great article in the Quincy Sun about six weeks ago, a elaborate article, and this guy was talking about time each day that was going to be spent by each person riding the tea because of this development. And I don't know. I, I'd just like to see something done about it. Thank you. I hear you, Jim. It goes back to leadership, leadership. Different ideas up at the city council. Different eyeballs to look at it. Different thoughts to say, why are we doing this now? The MBTA had 37 plus years to make the station ADA compliant, and they decided to do it at the same time they've awarded a contract, or allowed the developer who's gonna go forward with this at North Quincy. Not to mention the fact they're gonna take down a garage in Quincy Center that's been empty for eight years. If you or I own that garage, Jim, and we weren't making any money for eight years, do you think we'd keep it going for eight years empty? 
No, no, we'd wait until they were taking down Walsden and doing something at North Quincy at the same time so we could really mess it up a little bit more. <laughs> it's leadership that's not there today. The mayor's doing a good job, the city councils, I don't have any fault with them. Everybody's working hard, no question about it. But we need some fresh eyes, fresh blood to say, are you kidding me? So I've offered up, as a candidate, I've offered up a little olive branch to go out there, because you're not going to change it right now. It's not happening, Jim. It, they're going to go forward with that. The contract's been let. LMH Holding is going to do the construction on it. At the same time, they're going to take down the garage in Quincy Center. And then at some point, the developer up here, uh, Mr. McKinnon, is going to start his project. He's going to take half the parking lot in North Quincy at the same time that the MBTA is going to pick up people after they've paid for parking at Wollaston. Get on the bus to drive down to North Quincy. Get off the bus. Get on the train that's too full with not enough cars, not enough frequency and then take a packed commuter ride into Boston. Are you kidding? No one's gonna to wanna to do that. And if they don't do that, they're gonna get out of the streets in Quincy, all over the place, not just Ward 6, but five, everywhere. Quincy Shore Drive, Hancock Street. It's a long solution that has to go here, a long thing. But we're, it's, the horse has already escaped. So what are we gonna do? 850 car parking lot over here. Free parking. For everybody that goes down there that's gonna get on the T, free parking. Let them get onto a free shuttle bus that can take them from there and bring them up to North Quincy Station to get onto the T. Never mind paying for the bus. Never mind getting on. I know they're going to have a free to go from Wallace to North Quincy. Why? So you can put another five pounds in a two pound bag? It's not going to work that way. So I'm proposing, and I, I put this out there in the Quincy Sun, offer some free parking up there. Let them get onto a bus, free parking out here. Let the people at North Quincy get onto a free bus back to here. Let them park out here for free. Open up the Commander Shea Boulevard. Why the Commander Shea Boulevard? So the cars that are leaving here and going towards the station can get by the cars that are taking a left-hand turn up the no-name road to get over the Ponce River Bridge. We talked about it a year and a half ago. Billy was here. I'm not saying it's your fault, Billy, but you, you, you were here. We did. We talked about opening it up. Yeah. And it's all its conservation land. You can't open it up. You can open it up, folks. You just have to replicate the conservation land. And you would say, well, what do you do with that? Well, for every five acres you take, you got to maybe give them 25 acres of replication. They can do it. We've landed on the moon. This is a pretty easy exercise. Replicate it out at Squanum Point Park. They would love to have it. More eelgrass out there for the walking pass. It'd be perfect, and it's right there. And you could widen it to the right 10 feet. You're not going out 40 feet, way out into the march. 10 feet, so the cars that are coming out don't get bottlenecked behind the cars that are taking the left. Have a police officer at the top of the ramp, just like Billy, that Stephen's talking about and Billy's talking about. Direct the traffic so the flow's there. You start coming down with the state trooper standing there with one of them big Smokey the Bear hats on, you think twice about being an idiot as you come up the side because he's looking right at you and you don't know if he's going to drag you out of the car. You're hoping he doesn't. So you, you kind of lighten up on the gas and you don't take that right lane in a minivan and piss off. Mr. Harris, that you're going up there. <laughs> That's what we should have there. Widen it out and don't talk about it. Do it now. Do it now. Because you've all got this development started. I would ask the MBTA to postpone one of them. I asked the developer, I said, why don't you wait a couple of years? He can't wait. He has the opportunity to make some money. Interest rates are low. The demand is up. It's high. They want to live. Quincy is a very, very desirable place to live. We live in a great city and it's growing all the time. And then you can get the federal government involved with it. Let's bring the feds in. We're right here on the water. Let the commuter boats come in on the weekends too and, and increase tourism. Let's make a stop at the JFK school. Let's make a stop at all the Harbor Islands. Let's make a stop at the airport and bring the feds into it too. Let them come up with a little bit of money. All right, Alec, uh, Steve, or Bill, a comment on Wallace and Steve. Yeah, I'd like to touch on it briefly. We discussed this issue a lot tonight. And, you know, Moving forward, this development with three of the four Quincy T stations in Quincy operating at less than full capacity is really kind of ridiculous. But let's face it, everyone who goes to Wollaston, they're going to drive to North Quincy. When that's full, they're going to be driving over the bridge. You know, opening up the lot here, having dedicated service to North Quincy will help alleviate some of that congestion. But having, having the residents, the taxpayers, pay to park in that lot that's been open and unused for 20 years it's really ridiculous so they need to offer an incentive Allie mentioned free parking yeah people go with free parking 
take the free bus over to North Quincy. Those are solutions. We're not going to be able to stop these MBTA projects. But let's face it, we don't control them. It's the MBTA does. But we need to be more of an advocate um, on when those projects are let out and when the work begins. Quincy Center T Station has been out for how long? Everyone who drives to Quincy T Station, it's Quincy Center, they drive to Wollaston. Wollaston's full, they go to North Quincy. And after North Quincy, they're back on the bridge. So we need to make a concerted effort to make a comprehensive traffic solution here, not just piecemeal. We, we've talked about areas here, areas here, but we need to take into account the whole city. And I promise to be an advocate for the ward and the city on those issues. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as far as that parking lot is concerned, um, I've, you know, as far as an advocate, I've been an advocate for not to have to pay for parking in a meeting with the DCR because that would make the ferry affordable. That's just one of the other things, including having a shuttle. But the DCR can't afford it. That's what they said. The DCR can't afford it. They work off of revenue. Their, that department survives off of the revenue of parking, different, different places. I'm surprised we haven't seen um, and I heard a rumor of it, uh, of uh, meters along Wollaston, along Wollaston Beach. Well, you know, you go to any of the other beaches, they have them. So many of the beaches up in the North Shore, uh, many, many beaches that have DCR parking lots. So this, they took advantage of the fact that we were opening it up uh, and they were working with us um, as far as getting the, the, the original the original um, plan. Now, we're talking about the extension of the Commander Shea. It, it's happening. The intent was already given. So I'm Marine. Wasn't the intent already given at the com uh, the com Conservation Committee? Yeah. Correct. It was. So this is in works, and there's and anybody can see look at it later on. And if you can see, it's really difficult. The little. The little like T right here, that's not for MBTA. That T is that widening what the folks are saying we need. It's going to happen. But again, it's going is it going too slow and is development going too fast? Yeah, it could be. But you know what? We're, we're gonna all I know is I'm gonna advocate. I've advocated for every single part of the, of this ward since I took over day one. I fought to get there. I fought. I came down here when I started. When I first started, they were tearing down the church, and they wound up. The attorney general wound up uh, prosecuting that man who tore down the church for disposing the asbestos illegally. Every day, my commute went from the church down through your roads, not to cut over the bridge, but to go down to the development that they were working on. Those folks were, who were doing the development down at where FedEx is supposed to go in were working at 6 o'clock in the morning. I was getting calls from folks here about trucks that were idling at 6 o'clock in the morning. You hear a truck, 10 trucks idling, ready to go? I went there. I had words, gave my card, my brand new card, to the, uh, the foreman. He asked me to go out and talk to, talk to one of the people his foreman out there and uh, who was running the show. I was afraid to go out there because I, I was afraid they'd probably put me in a can and throw me into the water. But I didn't do that. I went to Jay Duca. There was actually fines, I believe, handed out. And um, I can only say I've been advocating for every single person who is in my ward, who is here since day one. I'll continue to do it. Traffic, we will fight. We'll move along. We'll try. Wollaston, this has been in the works for two years. I, I, feel, I feel terrible about it. I think those buses, and I wrote a letter to the governor myself without permission from anybody, without having to go to the mayor, went down because I don't have to. Those buses should, we should have some of those buses going directly over the bridge, and we need three, they had during the construction, we need three police officers at the bottom of the Neponset Bridge, and let the buses go directly to JFK. It'd be faster, it'd be more comfortable, and it would get them where they can grab two trains instead. The kids will get off of the 
the, the bus, the, the train, after getting off to go to UMass and BC, people will be able to go from a bus to the train. I even think some of the buses should go to certain parts, whether it's South Station, if we can figure a way to do it that would be easier for the commuter. The MBTA needs to be fixed. DCR, we don't have control. We fought with them. We fought with them about dog walkers only getting an hour to be able to park over there, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, the amount of money they're getting, there's no way the ferry will work if we're charging people the amount of money there is and if we don't get subsidy for the, from the DCR. We need every alternative means of, of uh, transportation to get our people to work and home each day. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Ward 6 candidates. Let's switch over to the Ad Water.